Hello. Now that we've talked about uh, limits and continuity, and to be more precise, we talked about the types of uh, discontinuity that you can encounter uh, for a function. Let's approach one of these problems that are very common. Most uh, teachers are going to give you at least one of these problems, and usually they put it in a test. So you may want to actually pay attention, because as you can see at the first sight, it looks a little scary, but actually it's a very simple uh, thing to approach. Uh, these sort of problems usually are given for you to gather easy points in a test, not to uh, confuse you. But that doesn't mean that you cannot get confused, because you rarely encounter a function such as this. The reason you see so many things going on on this graph for one single function is because I'm trying to get most of those um, concepts that I told you about in the lesson in one single example. Due to the time restrictions in the classroom, here I'm just thinking that since this is a common problem that you're going to encounter in the class, it's a good idea to have an example here as well. It's just a way to verify that you understand all these concepts that I told you in the lesson. So let's not waste any more time. So let's see what are the requirements. What do we need to uh, find on this graph first of all. So as you can see I already put quite a few things that we need to determine. So let's take them one by one. At point A we need to determine f of minus 15. On this graph for simplicity each of these squares represents one unit. So when I'm looking for f of minus 15 first of all I'm gonna look for minus 15 it's right here and if I look on the graph of the function, on the blue curve, I see that right below minus 15, I actually have a hole in the graph of the function, right? That's what that represents, a small uh, circle. Well, that means the function doesn't get any value when uh, x is uh, minus 15. In other words, at the first point, uh, we're going to say that f of minus 15 is undefined. Let's see further. At point B, we need to calculate the limit of f of x when x approaches minus 12. Once again, we have to see where is this minus 12. It's right here. And at minus 12, if I'm looking on the graph of the function, I can notice that I, I actually have a gap in the graph of the function. And as we remember, that's actually uh, related to continuity of a function and its limit are very closely related. So by definition, if I have a gap like that, I don't really have a, a limit at that value. I'm going to have another uh, situation uh, similar to this, and hopefully you're going to understand it better at that time. But in this case, at point B, again, I'm going to say that this limit of f of x when x approaches minus 12 does not exist. At point C, we need to calculate the limit of f of x when x approaches minus 5 from the left. You see, now we are talking about left-hand limit. So I'm going to look on the graph of the function and I see that it's actually it's increasing asymptotic towards plus infinity. This is actually the value for our limit. I'm going to say equal to infinity. You've noticed how many times when uh, the value for uh, the limit is infinity or minus infinity, we say does not exist. Yes, because it doesn't have a numeric value, but it's quite a big difference between plus infinity or minus infinity. So now moving on to the, the next question is to find the limit of f of x when x approaches minus 5 from the right. So again, on this point minus 5, I'm looking that when I'm approaching minus 5 coming from the right, I see how I'm actually approaching uh, minus infinity with this uh, the graph of the function it's getting closer and closer to minus infinity so that would be uh, the value for this limit now the next point is asking us what is the limit of f of x when x approaches 0 now as you can uh, notice it's also an asymptote the y-axis is the asymptote so just to the left of 0 the function increases towards infinity. When I take values for x um, greater than 0, well, it comes from infinity and decreases. But here is asking us only 
what is the limit of this function when x approaches 0? Uh, simply like that. It doesn't say the left-hand limit or the right-hand limit. Well, we know that we have to do exactly the same thing like we did at point C and D when we uh, determined the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit towards that value. The same thing you do here as well. The same thing I've actually done uh, mentally only at point B because you can't calculate that limit unless looking at the left-hand limit and right-hand limit as well. Now, coming back to this uh, to point E, when x approaches 0, if I'm uh, determining the left-hand limit, which is infinity, and then I'm determining the right-hand limit, which is also infinity, they are equal, so I can conclude that the limit when x approaches 0 of f of x is infinity. Like I said, you can say it does not exist, but does not exist is not as explicit as infinity because this is helping you and you'll see why in the third chapter when we're gonna graph functions. Moving on, let's see what else we have here. Uh, point f. We need to determine f of 9. Well, first of all, 9 on the x-axis is right here. So if I'm looking on the graph of this function, what am I going to uh, select? Here, below, where its um, y value is minus 6? Well, I have a circle there, so that means the function doesn't take any values where that circle is uh, represented. So where this point above 9, so I'm going to look on the branch that goes above 9, where is that uh, field point? at coordinates 9 and 8, so f of 9 is actually 8 because of that point, right? So we know this representation, what it represents the point. It means that the function has a value. The circle represents a missing value, right? Now at point g, we need to determine limit of f of x when x approaches 15 from the left. So 15 is just, it's just this uh, last uh, situation where we have a discontinuity but we need to determine the left hand limit for this function so I'm gonna look on this uh, straight line that goes down to minus 2 it doesn't take the value at minus 2 but the limit approaches minus 2 so the left hand limit is minus 2 at point H we need to determine the right hand limit for this function f of x when x approaches 15 and I'm going to look on this curve that's above 15, right? You see, it approaches that um, value at 5. It doesn't take the value 5, but it's approaching it. So the limit, the right-hand limit, when x is approaching 15 from the right, is going to be 5. And the last thing that we need to determine, just to make it clear, f of 15 is going to be well, it's that uh, field point, which is of coordinates uh, 15 and 3. So f of 15 is going to be 3. So you see, it's actually very uh, simple. It's very common that uh, these problems involve uh, other type of questions as well. They usually ask you the following thing. Point J, how many removable discontinuities can you count on this uh, graph? Well it's actually only one because as we know removable discontinuity we have where the function doesn't get a value and that's only happening here at minus 15 now point k how many uh, jump discontinuities can we identify on this graph well let's see again i have one here at minus 12 i have another one at 9 and the last one at 15 when x is 15. So I have three jump discontinuities. And the last type of discontinuity that we know is the infinity discontinuity and we have also so the first infinity discontinuity is at minus 5 and we have another one at 0 because the y-axis is also an asymptote. So we have two infinity discontinuities. As I told you it's a very simple uh, type of problem to uh, to determine limits on a graph for any function, basically.